If you are dealing with constant anxiety, it is super important to understand that your body is reacting as if you're in danger. You're not, but that is how your body's reacting. And I'm going to tell you why this is super important and what you can do about it. It is possible to overcome constant anxiety. Truly, it is. Now, it's not going to be a 10-minute video that's going to cure you of this, but I am going to point you in the right direction and give you a framework and an approach to begin to work through this. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Barbara Heffernan, and I was a psychotherapist for 20 years. I quit my therapy practice, started this channel to begin to bring information about living a more joyful life worldwide. Okay, let's come back to it. When you are anxious, your body thinks it's in danger. So let me elaborate on this for you. Anxiety is a signal to your body that something dangerous is happening or a about to happen and your body immediately kicks into gear with a ton of adrenaline and then cortisol floods in to bring the adrenaline down. But that adrenaline doesn't come down because you remain anxious. The cortisol remains elevated. Your entire body is ready to flee fight or freeze all the time. Now, some people are very, very aware with their anxiety of how it feels in their body. That would be called somatic anxiety. Feeling sweaty, heart racing, stomach upset, all of that in the body anxiety, that's felt somatically. Other people are super aware of cognitive anxiety, which are the racing thoughts, the oh no, and the this is going to happen, and then that, and then the, that, and then the, the catastrophizing. In one of my videos, I talk about it, and I, I get a lot of comments from people who are like, yes, this is exactly what happens to me. My boss criticizes me at work, and my mind goes to one problem to the next to the next, and all of a sudden, I'm homeless. Well, your body is experiencing that internal story as if it's actually happening. So if you experience your anxiety cognitively, I'd like to encourage you to begin to to understand it and feel it somatically. If you feel your anxiety somatically, I'd like you to begin to be more aware of the cognitions that goes with it. But either way, we have to help your body understand that it is not in physical danger. Nothing is happening right now. If you're feeling anxious right now, you're watching a video, nothing is happening. You do not need adrenaline coursing through your blood. So the physical effects of anxiety are very real, but they're not congruent with the situation. Let's say you're in that situation where your boss is criticizing you and your body begins to feel anxious. That's the fight, flight, freeze, which is a survival response, but you're not physically in danger. So really beginning to separate those two things to be able to separate, okay, this might be a difficult situation. I'm not saying that maybe you have a hypercritical boss. Maybe you are worried about losing your job, okay, but it doesn't require the fight, flight, freeze chemicals. One of the best ways to calm that down is slowing and deepening your breathing. I know people don't always want to hear about diaphragmatic breathing, but it is super important. Overall, figuring out how to let your body relax periodically during the day, learning to be in a state where you can be relaxed but alert, right? Those are the kind of things that are going to help your body calm down. And if you can calm your body down while your boss is criticizing you, you might actually have more access to the creative part of your brain that can come up with a solution to the problem. Most of the problems we're dealing with in today's world really require like the full brain to be online, not just that amygdala, which is the fight, flight, freeze, poof, run away or attack or freeze, right? You can begin to have some of these conversations that may in the past have made you feel anxious with way lower anxiety without that kind of extreme anxiety response. So one tool, diaphragmatic breathing, other things that help you calm down, walks in nature, that sort of thing. Another tool is to fully understand the cycle between your thoughts, your behaviors, and your feelings. And I do go into quite a bit of detail about this in my video, Cognitive Behavioral Exercises, but I'll explain it here as well. Your thoughts impact 
how you feel and how you behave. Your behaviors impact your thoughts and how you feel. Your feelings have two parts. They have a somatic part in the body feeling and they have an emotional part. So if you experience your anxiety with like stomach aches, you might get that stomach ache first as a physical feeling and then you say you identify it as anxious, the emotional feeling, and then your brain kicks in to give you a reason to have that stomach ache. So if you experience things very somatically, this entire cycle will start with your stomach or your muscles or your heart rate. If you experience your anxiety cognitively, it's going to start with the thoughts and then it's going to trigger into the body. But understanding this cycle is super important because choosing behaviors that can interrupt either those somatic feelings or those thoughts can be critical. So as I already mentioned, the behaviors could be taking a walk, calling a good friend, getting support, engaging in those behaviors that let your body experience more of a sense of calm will build over time and will give you breaks, right? You're saying like, I have constant anxiety, so let's make it not constant. And then eventually we can get it to the point where it's not really an overwhelming emotion for you, right? Like, so again, if we go to the fact that all of our emotions have information for us, we'll always sometimes get anxiety, right? It's just a little bit like it's a little wake up signal, right? So having a little bit of anxiety that's reasonably managed is fine, but we wanna get you off of this train of constant anxiety. And the other key here, whenever somebody has a very habitual emotion, whenever anybody says, I constantly feel this emotion, I call that a habitual emotion. Our habitual emotions almost always cover up something else. People who habitually feel anxiety maybe don't want to feel sad. So if something sad happens, oop, I'm not going to feel that emotion. I'm going to get anxious or disappointed. You're disappointed in a loved one who's not doing well and they could do well, you think, and you're disappointed, but you don't really want to feel disappointed or sad. So you're going to get anxious and begin to like jump in there and anxiously tell them what to do. And anxiety also kicks in when we don't want to feel powerless. And yet there are some things we're powerless over in this universe. The weather, good example, right? But we can protect ourselves. We can learn to be like, oh, might rain today. I will carry my umbrella. Mm, hurricane might hit, I better go take care of what I need to take care of. So knowing we're powerless over something does not mean we roll over and become a doormat. But anxiety is very often tied, if not always. I would say extreme anxiety always tied to those things we don't have power over. So we get very attached to a particular outcome. We want that outcome, but we actually can't achieve it. So we're going to go into a whole anxious spiral. Now, I also just at the end here want to say, because there's many different types of anxiety, right? So when somebody says constant anxiety, the actual solution for somebody who has OCD versus social anxiety, versus generalized anxiety can be different. But this concept still applies to all of them. For example, people with OCD very often will feel, I have to follow these rituals so nothing bad happens. And they know, they know in their conscious mind, these rituals totally unrelated to whether that thing actually happens or not. But that's how they fight their feeling of powerlessness. Social anxiety, I want everybody to like me. I never want to make a mistake. You know what? Not everybody's going to like you and you will make mistakes. So these tips will help no matter what your anxiety is. So one is to let your body relax. Understand that your anxiety is creating a fear response. Calm that fear response down. Two, look into whether you experience your anxiety somatically in the body or cognitively or both. And then begin to more deeply understand the psychology of your thoughts, behaviors, and feelings. All right, please give this video a like if it was helpful and subscribe if you're not subscribed. I'll see you next week.